Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about solving linear and nonlinear systems of equations. So this should be a largely review for you guys. Today we're really just going to focus on the substitution method, although there are other ways that you can solve systems of equations. So the substitution method, method um, essentially you're going to start by isolating one variable, and then you're going to substitute that value into the other equation. Um, which will give you a, an equation with one variable. So you're going to solve for that remaining variable and then substitute it back into either of your original equations and solve for your last variable. Um, let's do a couple practice um, problems together. So here we have x plus y equals 4 and x minus y equals 2. So the first thing we're going to need to do is isolate one of our variables. So I'm going to work with the second equation, and I'm going to solve for x, just because it seems like the easiest thing to do. So we say x equals y plus 2. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to substitute it into the first equation. Um, just a general rule of thumb whenever you substitute. It's a good habit to just put it in parentheses. It will help when there's a negative involved. So we end up with 2y equals 2. So y equals 1. So now that we have our y value, we can substitute it into either of our original equations. So I'll substitute it into the first one. So we have x plus 1 equals 4, so x equals 3. So we start off with a really basic problem. And since this is a system of equations, we are going to write our answer as a coordinate. Because technically what's happening here is we have two lines that are crossing at some point. So that point of intersection is our answer. And of course that would be an xy coordinate on a graph. So our answer is 3, 1. Alright, go ahead and pause the video and give this first problem a try. Okay, go ahead and check your work here. Um, you should end up with 3, 3 as your answer. Okay, so now let's try um, a more application-based problem. So here it says a total of $12,000 is invested in two funds, paying 5% and 3% uh, simple interest. The total annual interest is $500. How much is invested at each rate? So since we have two different funds that we're investing into, we're going to have two variables. So we're always going to start by defining our variables. So we can do that by looking at the question. It says how much is invested at each rate? So our variables are going to represent the amount invested at each rate. So let's say x is going to be the number of dollars invested at 5% in the 5% fund. And let's say y is the number of dollars invested at three percent. Well the first um, part of our statement or of the question says a total of twelve thousand dollars is invested. Well that means that x plus y must equal twelve thousand dollars. And then we need to make another equation because we have two variables requiring two equations to solve. So we need to um, find some way to make use of the fact that the total interest is $500. So essentially what interest is, is if you have money in this first account, at the end of the year it's going to pay you 5% of however much money you have. And in this other account it's going to pay you 3% of however much money you have. And that total should add up to $500. So I'm going to get 5% uh, of X dollars. So we can represent that by saying 0.05X. And we're going to get 3% of y dollars, so we're going to say 0.03y, and that total interest should be $500. And now we just have a basic system that we can solve. So here, um, just to make our lives a little easier, I'm going to clear the decimals by multiplying both sides by 100, something I would always recommend doing. And now it's much easier to solve. Um, so for this one, let's uh, start by solving for, I don't know, let's solve for x here. So x equals 12,000 minus y, so that I'm going to substitute into this equation. So 5 times 12,000 minus y plus 3y equals... 
So we end up getting negative 2y, if you distribute and combine like terms, we'll start solving equals negative 10,000. And so that means that y equals 5,000. And now we can go back and substitute that in to either of our original equations. So I'll substitute into the first one. So we have x, sorry about that. We have x plus 5,000 equals 12,000. So x should equal 7,000. So now we just wanna make sure to write our answer um, in a complete way. So we are gonna say that it was seven hundred and seven thousand dollars invested at five percent. This is why we like to define our variables so we can see exactly what it is. And then five thousand dollars invested at three percent. And this is our answer. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try really quick. <clears throat> okay, so for this problem, a little bit trickier because of the decimals, you actually have to multiply by a thousand if you want to clear the decimals, which I would always recommend doing, but you should end up with um, 6,250 invested at 6.5% 6 and 18,750 invested at 8.5%. So here we're going to solve a system of um, non-linear equations. So you can see that our first equation is actually a parabola. So we actually need to be strategic with what we're substituting. So you can see that since we have x squared and x, we are going to need to get rid of this y, which means we have to solve for y here and substitute it. So you do need to be, like I said, strategic there. So I'm going to solve for y in the second equation right here. So we got y equals... 2x plus 1, and then this I'm going to substitute into the first equation. So we get 3x squared plus 4x minus 2x plus 1. Make sure you substitute with parentheses so you remember to um, distribute the negative. <coughs> Excuse me. And so you end up with 3x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals zero. So now we have a quadratic equation which we know how to solve, so let's factor it. So we get 3x minus 4 times x plus 2, which means we have two x values. And that's okay, that just means that we need to substitute both of them to find two y values to go with them. So let's substitute it into the second equation just because it's a little bit easier. So for that first one, we're going to get 11 thirds as our answer. And we're going to write that as a coordinate. So this is one of our points of intersection. All right, and let's substitute negative 2. Sorry, minus y. So here we end up with y equals negative 3. And we're going to write that as a coordinate as well. So these are our two solutions. So just graphically <clears throat> and conceptually what's happening here is we have a parabola and a line. And so it is absolutely possible to have two solutions to a nonlinear system. It is still possible to have one solution if you have a line that falls tangent. Of course, it's also possible to have no solutions. So when you have a nonlinear, make sure you look out for all of these different possibilities. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. Okay, for this one, you should end up with two um, solutions. You have negative three, negative one, and two, nine. Okay, now we're gonna try another problem with nonlinear equations. So for this one, once again, we can see that since we have x squared, we're gonna need to substitute for y. So for that first equation, I'm going to solve for y and then substitute it. So we say y equals x plus 4. And then I'm going to substitute it right here. So x squared plus x, and then we'll say plus 1 equals 0. 
So I substituted it and set the equation equal to zero all in one. So here, um, it's a quadratic, but you cannot factor it, which is okay because we have other ways to solve. So we're gonna need to use the quadratic equation. So hopefully you remember the quadratic uh, formula. So in this problem, you'll see something kind of interesting happening. Here we get the square root of negative three over two. Um, so we know that when we have something that looks like this, it means that both of our solutions are actually going to be imaginary. So in this case, we have no real solutions, which means that we have no points of intersection. So at this point, we're done. So essentially, if you come across um, any type of imaginary solutions, you can just say no real solutions. But you do need to make sure that you have all of the correct work shown up until that point. Um, so you can prove that there are, in fact, no real solutions. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. And make sure you are careful with this problem when you're substituting. Okay, so for this problem, you do need to substitute for y. And this one, you do have a binomial, which you're multiplying out. So you need to be careful for that, but you also need to be careful that you keep it grouped together so you remember to distribute the negative. So you should end up with this quadratic equation. And when you solve, you should end up with this. You don't need to simplify past here, but if you did, that's great. But you should end up with um, no real solution. Okay, um, I do want to make sure you guys are aware that you can solve a system of equations by graphing. However, I typically wouldn't recommend using this problem or this method unless you have a graphing calculator because it's not super accurate unless the solutions to your uh, systems are nice whole numbers. So if you have a graphing calculator, it's a great quick thing to do. But um, if you don't, I would probably pick a different method. But you can always try, and it's really just graphing them and looking for the points of intersection. Okay, so now we're going to try some more application-based problems. So for this problem, it says the shoe company invests um, 300000 in equipment to produce a new line of athletic footwear. Each pair of shoes costs $15 to produce and sells for $70. How many pairs of shoes must the company sell to break even? So we're going to talk about what it means to break even. So in order for a company or a person to break even, it means that the cost must be exactly the same as the revenue, which is how much money they're bringing in. So if how much money they bring in is exactly the same as how much they put in, those two cancel out and they break even. So they haven't made money, so they haven't made a profit, but they also haven't lost money. So we're going to try to create a cost function and a revenue function, and then we're going to set them equal to each other to find that break-even point. So they ask how many pairs of shoes. So our variable x is going to represent the number of pairs of shoes. So always make sure you define your variable. And now we're going to try to create two equations, um, one for cost and one for revenue. So let's start with our cost. So they invest $300,000. So no matter what, that's going to be a sunk cost. It's something that you will have to pay back in order to not lose money. But then it also says that it costs an additional $15 per pair of shoes to produce them. So we can say plus 15 times x, however many pairs they decide to make. So that's going to be our cost function. <clears throat> So our revenue function, the way they make money is by selling them. And the shoes sell for $70 per pair. So our revenue is just 70x. So to find that break-even point, we want to find the point where C equals R. Our cost equals our revenue. So we're just going to set them equal to each other and solve. Okay, so we end up with 55x equals 300,000. So when you plug this into your calculator, you get a decimal. So you get 5,454.54 repeating. But since this is a word problem, 
we need to make sure that our, ac our, our answer actually makes sense in terms of a real life problem. So it wouldn't make sense to make 0.54 of a pair of shoes. And in fact, even though this one we technically would round up, um, for these types of problems, you're always going to want to round up because if you round down, you're not going to produce enough of the product to break even. You wouldn't quite make enough. So for this one, we actually are always going to round up and they're going to need to produce 5,455 pairs of shoes. So just make sure you, you kind of look at the context of the problem and see if your answer actually makes sense. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. <clears throat> All right, let's check your work. Um, so here you should create a cost and a revenue function, set them equal to each other, and that will fi help you find the break-even point. So it, um, the company needs to make 500 units to break even. All right, the last type of problem that you're going to see looks something like this. We have two different um, sales functions. It says two new movies, a comedy and a drama, are released in the same week. In the first six weeks, the ticket sales, which are represented by S in millions of dollars, decrease for the comedy and increase for the drama. So just by looking at them, since this first function has a negative slope, and I know that this must be the comedy because it says that the sales decrease for the comedy, and this function has a positive slope, so I know that it must be the drama. So that's just important to keep in mind. Okay, so it says X represents the time in weeks, um, with X equals 1 corresponding to the first week of release. So they say, according to the models, um, in what week are the ticket sales of the two movies equal? So since they want to know in what week are the sales equal, we're going to take both of the sales functions and um, set them equal to each other. So we just say 60 minus 8x equals 10 plus 4.5. And then we're just going to solve from here. So we get x equals 4. Uh, let's make sure we answer it completely. It says in what week? So we say in the fourth week or four weeks. There you have it. Okay, that is all for today's lesson. Thank you very much for watching.